Hi, I've been doing some research on iPhone 4S and iOS 5 battery life. And, uh, you know, I was on the Apple forums, you know, researching on the internet. Um, I just got a 4S, and so I've just been, you know, learning all about uh, what's causing the issues with battery life on my phone. And I just wanted to report these to these, these things that you can do to other users so that everybody could drastically see an improvement in their battery life. Um, without having to wait for Apple to, you know, release an update. Uh, you know, one thing to note about this is that uh, it's not going to be a perfect fix um, for your iPhone. Apple has acknowledged that there are some bugs in the software causing some battery life issues. But that's not to say that you're not going to be able to improve your battery life. And on top of that, uh, when Apple releases an update, hopefully you'll be able to get better battery life than other users without having to sacrifice the things that make your iPhone an iPhone, that make it a, a good, um, solid phone for everyday use. So without further ado, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of these. Um, and when you're done with this video, fe please feel free to go on Trials and Tribs, that's T-R-I-B-S, Tech, dot blogspot dot com. I have all these instructions listed and uh, a, a full rundown on things you can do to improve your battery life. And I've spent a lot of time on this, so I would definitely say that this is one of the more uh, full lists that you're going to find on the internet for improving your battery life. And in the future, I'm going to be posting other tips and tricks on there for all kinds of phones, software, networks, you know anything that you could think of tech related um, that uh, you can really get some value out of. So when you uh, notice that you're having battery issues, something that uh, a lot of people overlook that I think is really important is to power cycle your phone. Uh, if you have any memory leaks, you know, if there's any software that's having problems on your phone, by power cycling your phone, you know, you will end that process and uh, Hopefully when you power your phone up, you're going to see a little bit of an improvement on your battery life right away. So what I would say about that uh, is just like a computer. If you start having problems with a computer, you're going to want to power cycle your computer because oftentimes that will fix the problem. Uh, iPhone is a computer that you hold in your hand, so uh, it's you know, an important first step for helping yourself out. The next thing that I would recommend is to go ahead and uh, do restore on your phone. And I tell you to do this one first because, um, for example, I, I will mention later on about calibrating your battery. And if you do a restore after you calibrate your battery, uh, you know, there's a good chance you might have to calibrate your battery again. And that's sort of senseless. So you know, I really, really would suggest uh, making that the next step for you. Um, what you do is you plug your phone into iTunes and uh, you know, you click on the phone on the left margin and you will click restore. And it'll go through its process, it'll restore, it'll be like it came out of the box. And then you want to go ahead and restore from backup. Now, some people might think that when you restore from backup, it's going to restore the issue as well. Uh, but when you do a restore from backup, it does nothing to. Uh, restore the underlying operating system, the problems that you're having. It only restores your apps and some of your data and settings. So it really can, you know, cause an improvement in your battery life if there's a problem with the underlying operating system loaded on your phone. The next step, uh, you know, this has become sort of a cliche, and you know, and people have been upset about this one because, well, they want their iPhone to work as designed, and they feel shutting off all of their location services is going to, uh, you know, go against what the iPhone's about. Um, now, what I'm recommending on this, don't, don't shut off all of your location services. It's not necessary to shut off every single location service. But, you know, you got to consider is, you know, does a, does a game really need to have to know where you are? Um, does it, you know? Do your, does your Walgreens app need to know where you are at all times? And, and that goes for notifications too. Your your you know there are apps that have notification services. You know, for example, Real Racing Two 
It's a great app, um, but I don't need a notification from it. I go into the App Store often, and if I if there's an update available, it's going to let me know if there's an update. Uh, calibrating your battery. Uh, it does, you know, it's it's sort of weird on this one. There's a lot of big people have been talking about you know fantastic improvements in battery life because of this. Uh, I've experienced good increases myself, and you know the theory is that. Um, a lot of times what people are seeing is that either their phone's not getting fully charged because you know they're pulling it off the charger too early because the indicator at the top um, is not uh, you know functioning properly or they're noticing when they get down to one percent that they're able to play you know like 15 minutes of Fruit Ninja you know that's a personal example there I've been able to pay, play 15 minutes 20 minutes or more of battery of uh, Fruit Ninja on one percent of battery life and all you know. Otherwise, when I use my phone, it's, uh, the battery life isn't very good until I get down to one percent, and then it's it's all right. So what you do is you just run your phone all the way down until it shuts off, and then you got to charge it up to a hundred percent. What I mentioned before is when you charge it up to a hundred percent, sometimes it's not really all the way up to a hundred percent, and and the, and they and, and the indicator is inaccurate. One app that I've used that I found out that works well, it's better than other ones, is this uh, Battery Doctor. Now, and when you go into the market, it'll show Chinese characters, and it'll look like it might be in another language. And it does have Chinese characters in it, but um, there's a, most everything that's in Chinese is in English as well. And in this app in particular, it seems to make sure that your phone's fully charged. Other battery apps that I've used they tell you that they that the phone's fully charged you know it says it take two hours and forty five minutes to charge it from you know from basically nothing uh, this one says it takes four hours and it seems to when i'm using it when i'm getting down to a lower percentage like one percent it seems to be a little bit more accurate and so this this is one app in particular that uh, i really recommend now another thing that uh, people has men have mentioned is tweaking email settings. Um, with email, uh, there's a couple of things. People have been mentioning that it, the exchange uh, causes your battery life to be quite poor. And actually, if you remove the exchange account and add it back in, people have reported battery life improvements just by doing that. Uh, Something that I have done that I think has worked quite well for me, and you won't hear other people suggesting this, is that uh, if you remove your email accounts and have all of your email from all of your different accounts forwarded to an, a me.com email, an iCloud email, um, basically you will only have that, that me.com or iCloud email being the only email that's syncing to your phone instead of having in my example three different emails syncing to my phone and the nice thing about doing this and I really recommend going over the tutorial in my blog you know because it's a little bit complicated to, to talk about um, through a YouTube video uh, the nice thing about this is you can set up an account that you're gonna send email from so you know when I'm when I'm sending an email for a, a job interview I don't want them to get an email from me.com. It just doesn't seem very professional. So I have mine set up to come from my Gmail account, which is my name at Gmail. It's a little bit more professional. And, uh, you know, other people might recognize your email address as well that you set up for your outgoing. So Jeff, definitely check out my blog for that. Uh, something else I've, I forgot on the location services is that um, if you go into system services, and I'll, and I'll just take show you a, a quick look at it, you go into location services um, and under system services it's been speculated that this setting time zone uh, setting in here is uh, been causing problems with battery drain you know because it's constantly looking for what time zone you're in now if you're like me I'm in the mountain time zone and I never leave the mountain time zone you're probably going to want to turn that off. There's no reason your phone needs to look for the time zone because, you know, you're, you're, if you're not traveling a lot, that's not a necessary setting. Also, location-based iAds. I don't even click on any ads, and I think there's a lot of people out there like me that don't either. 
Uh, and I think that for most people, <laughs> you can turn that off. You know, anything that's on that's not necessary for you is going to drain battery life. Uh, diagnostics and usage, uh, that's a toss-up. If you have problems, that's good to have on, you know, so people can actually help you when you go to the Apple store or call Apple. But for me, I'm not having a lot of problems. I turned mine off. Uh, you may even choose to turn off traffic. Uh, supposedly, that is for um, you, you know tracking traffic to help with the maps. Uh, you know, show what what routes are clear and 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 how traffic is. You know, that can be turned off if you don't use the compass. Of course, you can turn that off. Um, let's see. A lot of these apps like. Like I said, don't you you look through this menu, they don't all need to be turned off, but you know the ones that you know you don't generally need. Speed test, you know, is an app that I have on here for testing my internet. You know, I can set the location. I, I hardly ever go into that app, so I don't have the location based services turned on for that. Also, um for for email uh, for notifications, um it's rumored that the calendar notification um uh, has been eating up battery life that that's another bug I turned it off on mine because I don't use calendars very much you know if you use it I, I would recommend turning it on yeah you're gonna get better better battery life if you turn it off but you know you want your phone to be usable for what you do too and uh, you'll see here all these apps for notifications you know I don't really need a notification from eBay you know from from Google search stuff like that so I turn all that off um, because it's just not necessary and uh, let's see here. Oh, and that, that brings me to my other point on email is that um, you might want to set up fetch on your email. When you go in here, uh, you can set up fetch, and you can set it up for as, as, for as often as 15 minutes or as far out as an hour, or you can even set it up manually. Um, now, fetch... Uh, I believe is where your phone connects to the server and looks for email every hour. Push would be like every time you get an email, it automatically pushes to your phone, which means your phone's in a state of being constantly connected, and uh, you know push is going to eat up more battery life than fetch, and you fetch every 15 minutes is going to eat up more battery life than every hour. You know, for me, I have it set every hour. I like to get my emails because I work on people's phones, um, but. Uh, at the same time, you know, I don't need them every 15 minutes, and I, I appreciate the better battery life that I get because of it. And let's see, what else? Okay, so if you go into uh, General and go down to Restrictions, another reported bug is with Ping. And uh, Ping's like a social network for music over iTunes. I don't use it, um, so I turned it off. You know, of course it makes you, you got to enable restrictions and you got to type in a passcode and all that. You sort of saw that right there. But yeah, like I said, if you turn off ping, if you just don't use it, turn it off and it'll save you battery life. Um, you know, I haven't tested that one by itself to see the improvement in battery life, but it's a widespread uh, Thing that people have talked about on the Apple forums and so I recommend turning it off for most people you know people who don't use it and uh, you know every every little thing is going to help your battery life and if you notice you know I'm not telling you to automatically turn anything off I'm not going to tell you to turn automatically turn Bluetooth or Wi-Fi off I have all of those things enabled on my phone including location services and some notifications I've tripled my battery life I was getting quite poor battery life, not quite as bad as some people, but quite poor battery life on here, and I've tripled my battery life. You know, I can make it full, through a full day now instead of, you know, a little bit after lunch, and my phone's basically dead. And, you know, if you go through all the settings of all the apps in the, in the, in the general settings menu, you'll notice, for example, if you go down to Facebook, and you go into Facebook, you'll notice that there's a separate area for push notifications in here. And there's 10 different push notifications in Facebook. Um, I recommend going through all of your apps in the settings menu and going through all the settings just one time. You know, it'll take a little bit of time, but if you're having battery problems, it's going to really help you. 
And, you know, for example, on Facebook, turn off some of the notifications. I was able to turn off uh, four, four notifications without affecting the usability of how I use it. You know, so a lot of this is going to depend on you. If you're a super power user, your battery life's not going to be as good as mine. You know, if you uh, are just a casual user, it's going to be better than mine. Uh, but uh, my point is, is that, you know, there's been a lot of frustration with Apple online, and that frustration is due. But there's still stuff that we can do to improve our battery life. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think people should take a positive approach to this because you don't have to make, make your phone a dumb phone um, to be able to reap the benefits of better battery life. And let's see. I'm just taking a look here at it. anything else. Of course, I have printed out the instructions that I made for improving battery life. Uh, these same instructions... Very detailed, it tells you exactly how to do all of this, are available on my blog at trialsandtribstech.blogspot.com. I recommend going on there. You know, I'm a fast talker. <laughs> you may not have caught everything on this video. I may not have said everything on this video. Go on, the, go on my uh, blog, and uh, I have these instructions perfectly um, written out. And, uh, you know... I have some stuff that I've been doing on mine that is not commonly uh, recommended, um, and uh, you may find that it really helps your battery life. The last point I was going to make is about ask to join networks under Wi-Fi. Um, I think with ask to join networks, um, as you're driving around town, and, and some people have made this complaint, in, including myself, uh, where after you leave the comfort of your Wi-Fi network, your battery life t seems to take a dump. Uh, if you turn Ask to Join Networks off, I speculate that it will will not constantly be trying to join networks. Um, if you actually toggle Ask to Join Networks on and read the description underneath, and toggle it off and read the description underneath, you'll see why I think that might be. Um, so, you know, because... if it's not going to automatically just connect to a Wi-Fi network um, for you if that's turned off. And that's that's what I'm saying is um, it's, it's not going to try and connect to a network. And if it's off, it's not going to ask you if you want to connect to a network. It's not going to constantly be searching, which is a problem. So uh, take a look at that. And I, I hope this video helps. It's, <laughs> it looks like it's an 18-minute long video. Uh, but, you know... For all the frustration people are going through, spending hours on the forums, and you know I've spent hours on the forums myself, searching the internet, playing with my phone. Uh, you know this video I hope is a, a real value to people. You know it's 18 minutes long, and you know I hope you guys can leave some comments, give me some critiques. Uh, you know, tell me what's helping you with your battery life because you know. I, I, I'm dedicated to helping people. That's what I'm going to be doing for a career. I'm a, a college student, and uh, uh, I, I, I want to I want to start learning and helping other people, you know, for my career. So thank you for watching. And you know, if you like my video, uh, you like my webpage. There's going to be more to come um, on rooting androids and uh, uh, networking and media sharing on all kinds of things. Uh, thanks again for watching. Bye.